So right now, Renoir is the laptop talk of the town, and deservedly so. It looks damn impressive. And actually soon, I think that Tiger Lake will also deservedly enter the zeitgeist of powerful and efficient laptop APUs as well. Maybe not competing in all of the same segments, but it could make a splash. However, is anyone noticing someone missing from the conversation? Someone who should be scared they are missing? It's NVIDIA. Now, it sounds like they might have something to compete soon, updating their MX250 line, but to me, this may just not be good enough. And the fact that it's the biggest update they've made to this line, generation over generation for years, and yet it feels quaint, signals a major opening NVIDIA has left in the market, if you ask me. Let's talk about this, but first, a message from a sponsor. Currently, I am in the process of breaking down my mining rigs. It's just not profitable anymore, and I want to use some of the spare parts, plus a few new ones, to build my first benchmarking station. Now, what most people might not be able to guess is that my mining rigs all used windows, and ones with legitimate keys. But getting those legitimate keys was a hassle. I was forced to scour eBay and be discerning and making sure that the people selling those $10 Windows keys weren't a scam. And sometimes the keys didn't work and I had to fight for my money back. But you don't have to if you go to CDK Offers. Go to cdkoffers.com and use the promotional code Broken Silicon to get 25% off an already cheap list price of Windows 10 Professional. Then all you do is click on your email account, go to user center and then my purchase orders to get the code just use this code with a normal download of windows 10 professional from microsoft's website all right links in the description so let's take a look at this little old leak here on video cards if you look at the previous lineup the mx100 series this is one that i actually found quite impressive for the time i had a laptop with an mx250 and it was the 10 watt version which was maligned by many for having lower performance with the same name but i don't know if you undervolted it enough you could get it to not have that much trouble maintaining a decent 850 megahertz boost clock well again playing triple a games within 10 watts moving to the mx250 all they really did is used a more mature process at Samsung and overclocked the memory. And while I thought it wouldn't be good when I was forced to update my laptop, I found that it actually did legitimately boost 20% higher while maintaining lower voltages and you could overclock the memory past 8 gigabit per second. I think I got mine to like 8100 megahertz effective or somewhere around there, giving it honestly because of the reduction in throttling, a 30 to 50% boost in some of my games. Although most of them, the upgrade was small. And I declared, you know what? This is still kind of good enough to be slightly better than some of the best APUs out there. So then when you look at the MX350, which most likely by all indications has 640 CUDA cores, you might go, well, wow, they're really upgrading it this time, even if it's still Pascal. I mean, come on, it's a cheap chip. But we're in a different world now, a world where Renoir has doubled performance, and Tiger Lake is poised to do the exact same thing. So right off the bat, I think we just need to say that I'm not sure the MX330 makes any sense. Look, I love my MX250, but it's just uh, a GT1030. That's a Pascal card with only 384 CUDA cores, and... Well, it was good for 10 to 25 watts two years ago. It's 2020, guys. We're in a new decade. It was already barely above some of the decent APUs out there. And at this point, it's kind of completely pointless. I mean, Renoir has real IPC increases over Vega. It's not just clock speed, as it turns out. Now, Ice Lake is about 10% weaker than the MX250, so this should crush the mx250 but remember that's the 4800u with eight compute units the most cut down version the 4600u has six compute units so even that the budget option of renoir with six cores 12 threads only 15 watts that should beat an mx250 and that should be in like 500 600 laptops that's the target market of these 10 watt pascal chips so I just don't see a world where almost any product makes sense. I suppose there may be 
budget i5s or maybe those six core coffee lakes with this but i don't know how it could be cheaper and it'll certainly use overall like double the energy so that's the mx330 however the mx350 being based on the same product as the 1050 max q i suppose this could just barely make sense now to be clear it's not actually confirmed that it will use the same die as the 1050 max q you know gp 107 but i mean it just has to or it's completely useless so i'm running with the assumption it does that it will use it and in fact i think it may end up using the 96-bit version and let me explain further if you go to newegg right now you'll see that the gtx 1050 not 1050 ti is basically gone i mean yes you can still technically buy them but they're more expensive than the 1050 ti's or the same price meaning stocks have dried up this is just what's left and prices are going up as stock goes out so what they're gonna do is divert the 1050 ti's to just keep selling i guess because people keep buying them yeah you see new reviews on there right now and take a slightly cut down version to be used as the MX350. And I whipped this up here. This is what I think it would probably be. You know, they'll probably cut it down some. And the 1050 Max Q version runs at like 1.1 to 1.3 gigahertz. So I think this will just probably clock in at about a 1 gigahertz clock speed if you TDP adjust it down to 15 watts. And yeah, that should just about fit in most of the same laptops that have an MX. 250 right now it'll use a bit more energy i doubt they'll get it down to 10 watts or if they do i mean i don't know they might <laughs> move the clock speeds down to 800 megahertz but either way that core performance will be notably better than what's out now uh, even tdp down probably a good 20 30 percent boost and i do think they'll use the 96 bit version simply because well two gigabytes ain't cutting it anymore and this would be a good way to add more bandwidth well, keeping power usage in check, you don't want to use four gigabytes, so, but I don't know. To be honest, there's a decent chance they will just still use a 64-bit bus with one two gigabyte chip attached to it. If they do that, I don't know. Two gigabytes just isn't enough in 2020. But either way, this is going to take up more room than the MX250. And at 15 watts, let's say they actually do get this down to 15 watts, although I think it's mostly a replacement for the 25-watt uh, MX250 laptops, if that makes sense. I'm not sure how this makes that much sense either, right? To get within an MX250 form factor will likely be constrained to still only 30-40% better. Like, even if it's twice as good, which it probably won't be, that's still only about as good as a 15 watt 4800U from Renoir. And again, I think Tiger Lake will actually get pretty close to that in graphics performance. You're basically asking OEMs, instead of using this 15 watt 4800U that's about as strong as an RX 560 or a 1050 in itself, you know, use a 15 watt CPU and then add another 15 watt GPU. I mean, you're doubling the amount of space and power usage. And even, the, again, like I said, the cut down 4600U will probably be close enough, will be way cheaper to implement. And for those wondering why they're not moving some cut down version of the 1650 into the MX lineup, the answer is obvious. The 1650 die is 200 millimeters squared. That's the size of most mid-range graphics cards in the past. So it's just too big. And well, you can, if you're really innovative, fit it into premium netbooks, that takes state-of-the-art cooling and a lot of money. And most people don't buy $2,000 gaming netbooks, right? Not even I would spend that much on a gaming netbook, and I'm kind of the target market. So we're in a situation where they're basically forced to use GP107. It's an awkward situation, and it really points to a giant question I have for NVIDIA. Where is the GT1630? Where is TU-118? This is a weird opening NVIDIA's left in the market that leaves me confused, right? So TU-117 that the 1650 Max-Q uses with uh, 1,024 CUDA cores is 200 millimeter square. Now, the GP-108 die 
that the MX250 and GT1030 use is 74 millimeter squared. That's tiny, dirt cheap to manufacture with one 64-bit bus. So you can just put one two gigabyte GDR5 chip on it. It's compact. Again, I think it's a pretty brilliant graphics card. And even though the Turing equivalent would have been bigger because Turing dies are just bigger, you could have made one half as big. 512 Turing cores instead of 384 Pascal cores. That would have probably performed 50 to 100% better and been 100 millimeter squared. Not 74, but still dirt cheap, still compact. And in fact, they could have put one 64-bit connection for one 4 gigabyte chip of GDR6. I don't see why they couldn't have gotten this down to the same power usage levels of GP108, and it would have fit in the same laptops. And, you know, one 14 gigabit per second, 4 gigabyte GDR6 chip, guess what? That's the same bandwidth as a 1050 Ti. They could have made something that's two-thirds the die size of a 1050 Ti with the same bandwidth and likely the same or a bit higher performance at lower power draw. Why doesn't this exist? Where's the GT1630 at $100 to make people not buy AMD's APUs? On desktop, nonetheless on laptop. This is a massive opening NVIDIA's left in the market. And I'm really not sure why they did this. Maybe they got cocky. Maybe they underestimated Renoir just like Intel did. They could lose one of their highest volume selling parts of the laptop market. I know they have these like RTX 2080 Max Qs that Wang likes to brag about, but most people are buying these super cheap chips. And I mean, I like it. I like seeing the N NVIDIA sticker on my little compact netbook. I think it looks cool when people see that and they go, wait, that little thing has a graphics card? It does, and it wasn't expensive. But it's gone now. I see no purpose in the MX330. It's already, the 250 is obsolete. This is a two-year-old design. And shoehorning in some weird cut-down version of the GTX 1050, it's going to take up more space. It probably won't even be better than Renoir. And it'll be more expensive. And it's just, it's gone. And once Tiger Lake hits the scene, we'll just be talking about all of these budget gaming laptops between uh, AMD and Intel, and NVIDIA will be left out of the conversation. A conversation I used to bring up constantly because I thought, even though I thought that the Zen APUs would completely finish off NVIDIA right away, the MX150 changed my mind. I'm like, well, NVIDIA's changed the rules of the game. If you can make a 74 millimeter squared or a less than one, let's say a less than 100 millimeter squared graphics card that literally is like, you know, this big and you can just throw in on the same heat sink. Well, that's, I would still choose that over an APU. And this really begs a greater conversation to come forward. You know, maybe using huge dies on ultra mature 12 nanometer was essential to the design of Turing and it made good sense in 2018. But we're in 2020 now and it's starting to become impossible in a couple segments already for NVIDIA to compete with AM. D. I know they have the graphics crown right now, people. Calm down, calm down. But look at this weird Frankenstein thing they're putting together that's half as good as just an APU from AMD. This is troubling, you know. And when you hear that AMD's bought up all of TSMC's 7 nanometer capacity, yeah, I know supposedly NVIDIA is going to announce Ampere or supposedly not called Ampere, whatever their successor generation is soon. But when is it coming out? I'm really starting to wonder, right? Where's these 7 nanometer replacements or even 12 nanometer replacements of some of their other products? I think NVIDIA might end up announcing products with very, very low volume that they can't produce in bulk until the end of 2020, which will leave a huge opening for Big Navi, if true. And speaking of Big Navi... That's another video I have to have come out soon. Hope you enjoyed this video, though. It's an, a thing I didn't expect to talk this much about, but I th found it had some really interesting implications uh, about some odd choices NVIDIA has made recently that point to greater, or should I say, other developments coming soon in the market. Please share it, like it, support me on Patreon to keep making videos like this happen, and listen to Broken Silicon and Die Shrink. All right, thank you. <laughs>